Hi, everyone. Thank you all for joining me this Friday evening. We are here to talk a little bit about what it's like to volunteer at our emergency shelter. I'm Stephanie. I'm the Community Resource Coordinator with Denton County Friends of the Family, and I am joined this evening with uh, four of our volunteers that help out at our shelter on a regular basis. And I am so grateful to have all of you guys here uh, speaking with us and talking about your experiences as being a shelter volunteer. Um, our shelter is at an undisclosed location in Denton. Um, it is open to anyone who has who is fleeing an uh, abusive partner and needs a safe place to stay. We have 32 beds that are for women and children, but we do have um, resources available for men who are also fleeing their, uh, an abusive partner. Um, not at the shelter, but resources within town so that we can get you a safe night as well. Um, I wanna preface this by saying, um, one, if you are watching this and you need a, an emergency place to stay because you're fleeing an abusive partner, we do have a crisis line that is available at 940 382-7273. You can call or text that line 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days out of the year. Um, and then if you are watching this and you're interested in ever becoming a volunteer, we would love to have you. Uh, you can visit us online at dcfof.org backslash volunteer. Again, I'm Stephanie. I'm the Community Resource Coordinator, and I'm going to let my first volunteer uh, introduce themselves. My name is Sherry Bruner. Um, I've been volunteering on Wednesday evenings for about five plus years. My name is Tiffany Wright and I have been volunteering with Denton County Friends of the Family for several years, but this is the first year that I've been able to volunteer at the shelter. Um, because our youngest child is a senior, so I have a lot less kid kid activities. So first year for that. Hi, I'm Michelle Watkins, and I started volunte volunteering for Friends of the Family about a year ago. So <clears throat> I did my training last September, and then I just kind of got started right at the shelter. And so that's kind of where I'm at now. Um, my name is Jessica Duncan. Um, I have been a volunteer at the shelter for about a year. I started last summer. Um, it was originally for a class credit and then I just fell in love with it and continued. Um, so yeah. Wonderful. Well, I am so grateful that all of you have decided to volunteer with our agency and um, dedicate a lot of your time to our shelter residents who are staying and helping out there. So um, I just kind of want to talk a little bit about what it's like to volunteer at our shelter. So if y'all could um, give me a positive experience you've had while volunteering at our sh shelter and what it's been like. Um, feel free, anyone can start up to whoever wants to jump in. I'll say uh, I have volunteered each time I've done something different. And so I have never had a not positive experience volunteering. Um, I've gone in and I've helped with childcare. I've helped clean out a refrigerator. I've organized produce and every time has been a positive experience. So I don't have just one. Okay, that's wonderful. Uh, I was gonna say one of the positive experiences that I have enjoyed at the shelter is just interacting a little bit with the women and the children, you know, maybe just asking how their day is or, you know, giving them a few words of encouragement. And, and then the other thing is that, you know, no matter what task I'm doing, they're always the first ones to say, thank you for what you're doing for us. And I find that very inspiring considering that they are the ones that are dealing with a very traumatic experience in in their lives and so I kind of look at it as no matter what task whether I'm sorting cleaning organizing whatever you know if I can take that task off of someone's plate then that means they can really uh, focus on the more important thing which is getting these ladies back to a new life 100 percent. thank you yeah I um I kind of do what everybody else has explained <clears throat> as far as organizing and cleaning but I think my I was trying to think about what was something that stood out the most and 
I don't usually do childcare, but I did um, get the opportunity a couple of months ago to be in the room. There was a lot of kids at one point and they were working on childcare outside of the, <clears throat> outside of um, the shelter. And they were like, Hey, can you stay? And I said, yeah, I can stay. And there were these two little boys in there. And I don't, in my personal life, I don't slow down enough. But in that moment, I got to slow down. I got to play. We played with the little kitchen and um, and then we went outside and we played outside. And, you know, it was just for me, it was a good experience. And the fact that I just slowed down, I played. My kids are a little bit older. I don't get to play kitchen as much, you know, <laughs> I don't get to go outside and <clears throat> do some of the stuff that I used to do when my kids were little. So for me, that really stood out the most. And um, the child care is a little bit harder. I wish I could do it more, but with my own children, it, it you know, it, it usually, uh, the times don't uh, line up. So um, I think for me, just getting to do that, that one time stood out the most um, as a positive experience. Mm -hmm. um, I'm kind of along the lines with everybody else. Uh, um the whole experience has been a very positive experience. Um, I love interacting with the kids. Um, you know, I've worked most a lot in childcare, so I'm used to being around, you know, small kids. Um, I always love interacting with the women. Um, one positive experience I had, um, I was going into volunteer one day and, uh, the house manager had called me and she's like, Hey, you know, we're having the shelter clean today. Um, uh, we're taking all the, uh, the women out for breakfast. So I uh, met them for breakfast and uh, everybody had, had dressed really nice. They all had makeup on, they had their hair done and they had an absolute blast. They loved, you know, there were no kids. So all the kids were being taken care of. Um, so it was just a, a, a morning for them to get out on their own and enjoy some, some, happy time, some alone time. And, you know, they got to order whatever they wanted and they had an absolute blast. And so it was so much fun getting to see them laugh and smile, you know, despite everything that's going on in their lives. Um, another experience that really stood out to me. Um, so last Christmas we had a resident who um, was moving out and she had come back to the shelter to collect some things. And um, she was explaining to us how excited she was to have um, her first Christmas tree in her first apartment that she, that was hers. And something that we take for granted, you know, for, for Christmas, she, you know, was so excited to just have her own tree. And it just did put a big old smile on my face, so. Awesome. Thank you all so, so much for sharing that. Um, I will say this. So a lot of times we'll have up on our volunteer portal where you can go to sign up as long as you're an active member to volunteer. Um, it'll say light cleaning. Uh, some of y'all talked a little bit about doing some of those cleaning like things. And I feel like some people kind of go, oh, I don't want to go clean. <laughs> what is that like? <laughs> I know that's not a question we talked about earlier, but I just kind of want to touch on that for so that some of those that you've done that light cleaning, helping out at the shelter, what does that look like? Well, well I, oh, go ahead. No, no, go ahead. I'll go after you. Okay. I was just going to say, um, I, I like to clean and I like to organize. And, um, so when I go in, in fact, I think one time I went in and, and I was going to, I'd signed up for childcare, but they, the, the children weren't back yet or some, they were, they were in counseling or something like that. And so it, it was nice that they said, Hey, you can instead clean out the refrigerator or, you know, do this. No, you're not going to be turned away. There's always mm -hmm. something that's available to do. And, um, you know, it, it wasn't anything yucky or gross. And, but of course I like to clean. So it, and it makes you feel good. Like I think Sherry was saying, you're, you're giving, the, the women and children who are there at kind of some breathing room mm -hmm. um, so that they're not having to worry. And then it also allows all of the staff members time to deal with what they need to do. So they're not going, oh gosh, you know, the refrigerator, we haven't had time to clean it in a while and, and they're gonna have to take time out of their day. This is something that's easy that, that you can go in and do. And it mm -hmm. truly does make a big difference. Wonderful, yeah. 
Yeah, you know, when they, it says like cleaning and, you know, I don't mind getting my hands dirty. Like I don't mind cleaning. That doesn't bother me. And um, the first time I showed up, they're like, how do you feel about cleaning? And I was like, I don't care, you know? And I don't know about some people, but I like cleaning other people's houses more than I like cleaning my own. So for me, like just, you know, I would, they would say, all right, just, we're not sure yet what, or we want you to do go ahead and just go start cleaning up in the kitchen so I would just literally just start from one side of the kitchen wipe the counters you know a lot of with COVID I would um wipe down uh all of the surfaces that were touched a lot um light switches doorknobs you know I would go through the whole house well mainly the bottom floor I didn't really go upstairs as far as cleaning but it really wasn't anything like scrubbing. I mean, I would sweep sometimes if it, you know, looked like it needed to be sweep, swept, but the light cleaning, it really was just light cleaning. It's just, you know, wiping down the counters and um, I've done cleaning out the fridge. And uh, sometimes I would uh, go on Wednesdays and that was the day Rachel would go get food that, that day. So I would you know, pull out what it needed to be pulled out of the refrigerator so she could bring in the new food. Um, so yeah, but it, the same, it was like the light cleaning it really is like cleaning. Yeah. I mean, and it wasn't <laughs> scary. Like some people are like, Oh, like cleaning. It's, it really, you know, it's like dusting. It's dusting really. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And like others have said, it's doing something that they, it's one less thing that they have to worry about because this is their home, you know, for a short time. And, and, you know, if you can help them do something that, you know, that they're just like, I've got to think about something else, you know, that's for me, what is nice about it. So, yeah. I know as a staff member, I don't work in the shelter at all, but whenever I have volunteers helping out, it is just such a huge relief to be like, all right, I can trust this volunteer to help relieve some of, some of the burden. And I know that my work is not as extensive and um it's not that my work isn't extensive it is but <laughs> it's more like uh the pressure is really on for our shelter staff I think and so definitely having those little moments of relief of going okay I can trust this volunteer to go and do this work and the job's going to get done and it's going to get done well is really really wonderful so I really appreciate all that with every single one of you that you guys help out with that so one of the other questions we have is why do you choose to volunteer at our shelter what made you decide to do that? Well, my story is, uh, <laughs> is one about um, a, a, a lady that became my friend. Her name was Rosa. And she came to join our church. That's how I met her. And when she came, her address was the shelter. I didn't even know a shelter existed in Denton. Okay. And so I got to know her and we got to be friends. And she used to say, Oh, the ladies at the shelter need this. They never have this. They use, they could use that. They just don't. And so I had told her, I said, you know, when I, when I retire, I will volunteer at the shelter. And then also I joined our church mission council so that we could make a monthly donation and have donation drives. Now, the sad part of this is Rosa had ended up going into witness protection. So, you know, I, I don't see her anymore, but everything that I do when I, you know, I go, I'm doing this for Rosa. Rosa's the one that inspired me. She's the one that made me aware of this need. So anytime I volunteer there, I know that Rosa would be smiling. That's a wonderful story. Thank you so much for sharing that, Sherry. Very personal. <laughs> <laughs> it is. Yeah. Anyone else? Um, Tiffany, what about you? Why do you volunteer at our shelter? Um, I kind of touched a little bit on earlier is that now I just have more time and my job has always been fairly flexible, but it, extra time was always filled with uh, a lot of kids stuff. And this is our, our last kid in the house and um, she's at work all the time and it's the senior in high school this year. So it's quiet around the house. And I'm like, you know, I, it's nice to be able to donate funds, but I also like to be able to, to help personally. It, it just, it seems, seems like a good plan when you're able to do it. And I am now, so. I appreciate that a lot, Tiffany. Thank you. What about you, Jessica? 
Um, I like I said, I, I started volunteering for the shelter um, because it was required for a class, but I stayed because um, I mean, I fell in love with it. It just, the atmosphere is amazing. The staff is so friendly. I mean, they almost become like family. Um, and you really being at the shelter where you're, I feel like you're very, you're, you're always hands-on and you're kind of in the middle of the heart of DCFOF. And so Mm -hmm. you really do see the difference in the change that the organization as a whole makes, um, you know, I, I saw women come in who were abusing drugs and abusing alcohol and they left, you know, clean, you know, women who uh, were dealing with CPS who had lost their kids are leaving, you know, moving on to their new home, getting their kids back. Um, you know, DCFOF really helps with all of that. They help, um, you know, everybody live the best life that they can. You know, so um, I just thought you could really see the change and the difference. (laughs) Yeah. Appreciate that. Thank you. Yeah. Um, Not a lot of, a lot of people think, oh, we're just a shelter and we're more than just a shelter. Um, We do so much. We help with all those things that you just mentioned and then some. We try to go a little bit above and beyond if we can. Um, What about you, Michelle? Why do you choose to volunteer at our shelter? Well, I think... You know, initially I started because I just wanted to get started on doing something. Mm -hmm. It was one thing that I could um, go to each time. I knew kind of what they were going to have me do, organizing or cleaning or whatever. Um, And the time frame fit my schedule. (laughs) But at the same time, it's like kind of, I think what Jessica was saying, it's kind of the, for me, it feels kind of the heart, like the, 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 I don't mean this in a a bad way, but kind of the bottom level of where the heart of friends of the family is. It's like where the women go to feel safe, you know, Mm -hmm. women go to um, be, um, uh, get protection from, you know, the uh, abusive spouse or partner. And, and then when I started getting more comfortable with it, I was like, I really, and I hate the word enjoy because it sounds weird, but I, I do enjoy it. I think you guys have all kind of said it too. It, it just, um, it, it feels good. I like every aspect that, that I've um, volunteered for, but the shelter kind of feels, for me, I feel the most comfortable um, and the environment is great. And I like talking to the women and the kids, you know, I, I don't know. The kids are fun to talk to. And, uh, um, so yeah, that's kind of why I initially started and then why I kind of stayed pretty consistent with working at the shelter. I will say along those lines, um, a lot of people like to, a lot of people think of shelters as like a cold, sterile environment. And I think one of the unique aspects of our shelter is that it's got that very homey feel. Um, it doesn't, it feels more like a, a family than it does a stranger passing you in the night kind of thing. Um, and I, I'm happy to hear that's how you as volunteers also feel um, going in and helping our clients in that regard too. Um, and getting a little bit of that familiar fe- feeling too. I mean, it just goes to the, the, who, the name of our agency, Denton County Friends of the Family. So that's really um, impactful and really powerful. I appreciate that. Um, so the final question that I have for us this evening is, um, what is something you wish you'd known before you started volunteering at our shelter? Anyone can start. <laughs> I'll go first. I mean, I, uh, I um, wish I would have known. So um, new situations make me nervous. So I was a little nervous going in because I really wasn't sure what to expect. Um, and I think, you know, that could be, could go for anything, but I, but I, I think beforehand, um, I wish I would have just been able to feel, go in saying, it's okay to say hi. It's okay to talk to the women. It's okay to talk to the kids. Cause at first I didn't know what I could and couldn't do. Um, if I was allowed to, if I wasn't allowed to, and like I was saying earlier, you know, this is their temporary home and, and I'm coming in and I don't want them to think I'm, you know, just a robot cleaning, you know, I want them to know that 
you know, cause I've been in, I haven't been in, in their exact shoes, but I've been in a very similar situation and I'm not any different than they are. And I don't want them to think that I <clears throat> am coming in just, you know, once a week or once every two weeks to clean. I, I'm not any different. And I wish I would have known to just be more comfortable and know it's okay to, you know, just, um, say hi. I wish we could smile. Mm -hmm. You know, we have our masks on, but I yeah. always want to just like, you know, smile with my <laughs> eyes. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, I just, I wish I would have, you know, gone in knowing it's, it's okay to say hi and talk to them. I think Sherry said that she's gives encouraging words, you know, similar to that. So, yes. yeah, I, I wholeheartedly agree with what Michelle was saying. That was the same thing that I felt. Cause I was like, okay, I don't know what I'm allowed to do, what I'm not allowed to do. Are they going to go, why are you talking to me? Or, you know, that type of thing. And it, it is nice that it's not like that at all uh, across the board from mm -hmm. the ladies who are there, the kids, the people working there, everybody just blends in all together and volunteers as well. So it's very nice. I can't really think of anything that I wish I'd known. Maybe it's been too long, <laughs> but, um, you know, and I would agree with what everybody said, the, sh the staff and everyone, and even like the tasks, you know, if you clearly were given a task that you didn't like, they would be more than willing to just say, that's fine, let's do it. You know, I, I just always tell them, you tell me what you want done and I'll do whatever you tell me to do. I'm fine. Yeah. You know, but they're always, they're always very, very sweet, very kind, very helpful, you know, those kind of things. And asking questions. They, they don't care if I ask a bazillion questions. I'm like, wait, what did you say to do with this again? <laughs> no, mm -hmm. they, they don't mind. Yeah. What about you, Jessica? Is there anything that you wish you'd known before you um, started working at the shelter? No, it's pretty much what everybody else said. Just um, being flexible. Um, yeah. You know, like they said, there's, they're, they are not particular about what you help with. They need help in all sorts of areas and they are more than happy to have help in whatever mm -hmm. area that is. And, but, you know, there are times where things come up and they need you to kind of shift gears, you know, on a moment's notice and, Hey, I need you to help with this now. So just being flexible and, um, you know, like Tiffany said, not, you know, not worrying about asking questions if you're not unsure about something. Um, so, I mean, just, yeah, mm -hmm. just being flexible and, and communicating with them. Awesome. Well, um, I will say that every shelter staff member that I talked to beforehand were all giving every single one of you high praises. And they asked for y'all specifically tonight to talk to us about what it's like to volunteer at our shelter. So I really appreciate you all. And I know our staff does too. And so do our residents. And our residents change out more or less on a monthly basis. I mean, average last year per night was about 43 nights per night. Uh, for each resident and that's we average it out every year um, so thank you all for dedicating your time we really appreciate it um, again I'm going to put this out there if you're ever interested in volunteering with our agency um, you can reach us at dcfof.org backslash volunteer um, and if you are in need of some emergency assistance um, first of course always call 911 but our agency crisis line is available 24 hours a day seven days a week, 365 days out of the year at 940-382-7273. I hope you all have a wonderful rest of your evening and thank you for joining us. Thank you. Thank you.